Hello students, this is Dr. Vic and I'm going to be discussing your Lab 3 project uh, cost-benefit analysis of grad school. So let's go down here. Alright, so the way this is set up is basically you're going to consider grad school versus not grad school and you're going to write a letter to Uncle Mark for whatever decision you decide to make to give you a recommendation. Um, there's a few steps that you want to take. You want to do some research. You have to find three pieces of research. And these are all going to go into the cost analysis sheet right here in this Lab 3 Excel sheet. Okay. The three pieces you need is what if you only have your undergraduate degree? What is your earnings going to be? Okay. That's the first piece. The second piece is what about grad school? If you go to grad school, what would your salary likely be and what would it grow to over the next 20 years and what would the uh, costs be? Okay, so for example, I started to fill this out, you know, my cost-benefit analysis for MBA in information systems. My undergrad was in information systems. So I used this pay scale and found information systems and found that the starting salary was 53 and it goes up to 92,000, okay? Um, I went to ONET online and I looked up information system managers, okay? If I wanted to go to grad school, I'd want to be a manager, okay? So I'd look up the, top, the, the dream job I'd have, and that job in Pennsylvania starts off at 78.7 and moves up to 122 over the course of 20 years. And then I looked at a program. I chose the Stern School of Business because it's in New York. I lived in New York. It looked good. Uh, it was about $50,000. Uh, per year for two years. So as a as a as a uh, example, I said, okay, that MBA program is going to be a hundred thousand dollars. And I used this financial aid website to calculate my monthly loan payment. This is about eleven hundred dollars a year. Okay. So I put these this information in, and it fills out. As you do that, it'll fill out these columns. I haven't done anything else to this, but these columns are already filled out. Okay. One thing it filled out is, look, here's my starting salary and here's my mid-career salary. This column is basically showing what I would make um, in the two years uh, of school, okay? It, whether, if I didn't, my first two years, I'd make $91,000 doing this information technology undergrad-only job. And then I'd move up, going up over the next 20 years to 92000 what I put in here. Okay, if I change this to eighty thousand, it's going to change that to eighty thousand. Okay, it'll change that whole thing. All right, so this is what I make by not going to grad school. Um, over the course of that time, um, it would add up to one point five million in earnings. Okay, the second thing we look at is if you get the grad school degree, you're going to also going to move up. Okay, the first two years you won't make anything in grad school because you'll be in grad school. All right. Then you'll start off at about 78 or around 80, and you move up to this median salary. That's what we're assuming. You move up at some pace. Maybe you'll move up to the median after 20 years. Okay, so this would your, be your rate of, 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 uh, of pay raises over 20 years. And so it's a higher starting salary than before, and it raises to a higher median. So this is, would be my earnings in grad school. Okay. Now, the third thing I'll skip over here is we put in a cost, and, I, and most people have to pay for grad school and loans, all right? So your, your, your costs are going to be a little bit different. Here's the costs of grad school. Now, what's going on here? You have, remember, we have indirect and direct costs of grad school. Here's the indirect costs. Look what it looks like here. It's just equal to V7. If I'm in grad school, I'm not earning this undergrad pay, right? So that's an indirect cost if I go to grad school. So we want to count that. And then this 12, all this money, this is the present value, the discounted value of my loan payments. So the cost of grad school altogether are, is over 200000 in in present value terms, okay? What do you have to do here? What do you have to do? What you have to do is you have to find the present value of your benefits, Okay, what's your benefits? Your benefits are in this column, okay? Grad earnings minus undergrad. So that's already filled out for you. What is that? Well, for the first year, it's 80,000 minus 55,000. 
eighty thousand being your earnings were you to be have the grad school job, fifty five thousand were you to have the undergrad job. Okay? So this is your benefit in year one. All the way down to year twenty, that's your year twenty earnings, grad versus undergrad. Okay? Now again, what do we what's the final piece of this? You can't just look at benefits um, down the road. Uh, you have to put them into present value terms. Okay, this would be what you. This would be the future value. You have to put it in the present value. So what do we use here? This is the piece you want to do. Equals benefit divided by one plus the discount rate raised to time t. Okay, as you learned in the previous parts of the website, that's the discount the benefit, the, the present value formula, okay? And you hit enter. So what did it say? Well, the uh, future value of benefits is 25. The present value is 23.9, okay? Now, here's the other key. I'm going to, I want to, for each year, years 1 through 20, I want to take the benefit and the discount rate and the time, okay? Benefit and discount rate, they're going to change as I go down the column, but discount rate's going to need to stay the same. So I'm going to go to my original formula, and for the discount rate here, I don't want it to come off of G4. So I'm going to put dollar signs in front of G in front of 4. Okay? Now that's going to keep that discount rate in place. Actually, let me show you what happens if I don't do that, and then I'll come back and show you what it what happens if I do? Okay, I drag that down, and if I look at my discount rates falling all the way down here, that's not good. I don't want I want the discount rate to be back up here, but I don't have to do that every time. Okay, so I put the dollar signs in front of G, in front of four. Okay, and now I take this little right hand piece, this little bottom right hand box here, and I'm going to drag all the way down. And now I get something very different. At your 20, let's check it. It's the benefit divided by one plus the discount rate, okay, that stayed in place, raised to year 20. Okay, the present value of my benefits in 20 years from now is 11,000. The future value is 30,000. This is the one I want. Now, the final piece is, my, my, the, at the end of the day, my decision is, did I make more in benefits than I, had in costs. Look at this. This is the sum of all my benefits, sum of E8 through E27. So I already calculated for you. Here's the sum of my costs. Which one's bigger? Okay. If benefits are bigger, I do the grad school. If costs are bigger, I don't do it. An easier way to say this is the NPV, and the NPV is simply equal to this, the sum of benefits plus the sum of costs, okay? Because costs are I already have the negative in here, so you just add them. Overall, my net present value is 138,000. So I can, in my letter to Uncle Mark, I say, uh, you know, grad school is very costly, but the benefits through my mid-career far outweigh the costs. I have a positive net present value. I should do this, and that's how you do it. All right, good luck.